and uh, he just listened to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He went to several schools. His major academic tendencies was as government college, Ujeli. Go on, go, gather, uh, destroy their food. Let the motivated camp and that other camp, some more camp. No compensate everybody. But some of them, And we shall also be very interested in this point at more than two. With too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. Long after some of these earthly adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet. Good day, thank you very much for talking to the African Center for Community and Development and to the Copenhagen Consensus for HIV AIDS for Sub-Saharan Africa. What are your names, sir? I am Elvis uh, Wengong. Thank you. And you run an organization. What is the name of your organization? Uh, organization for Gender, Civic Engagement and Youth Development. And you have a lot of activities um, linked to HIV AIDS, sensitization, and advocacy. And can you please give me in detail the kind of things you do? Um, I will really start by talking about uh, the, the, the whole, our entire, like what actually made us to get into the uh, working on HIV and AIDS. Um, the aspect we actually realized that we had a lot, a lot of young people, kids, you know, who are HIV positive, which actually came, uh, which actually, which actually was as a result of their parents being infected with HIV. So, we, since we work with orphans and vulnerable children, so we realized that um, these children they are not properly cared for, and we try to go down to the rooted cause of it. So, uh, in, in actual, actual fact, we, we work with women, these women who are infected from the stage where they, they get infected to when they have given birth and we try to see how we take care of these uh, orphans who maybe don't have parents again and they are HIV positive. And in the course of your work, what have you done so far? Um, which are the um, aspects of society or the the subpopulations that you have touched in your work and tell me more about what you do. Presently, uh, presently and for since uh, 2009, we have been uh, working on um, uh, a national program for care and support to orphan and vulnerable children, especially those who are HIV prone or those who are HIV positive. So um, it's a program sponsored by UNICEF and it's uh, uh, we, the program is closely, we implement it closely with the Ministry of uh, Social Affairs. So um, we are actually looking at, there are four uh, major areas. I think it's a program that is called 4P, with four major areas, primary prevention amongst children and adolescents, primary uh, prevention of mother to child uh, prevention of HIV, pediatric care, protection care and support to orphans and vulnerable children. That, that, that is the fourth phase. It's, it's like we are looking at it from from the stage, like I said, from the stage where the, 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 the woman actually uh, contracts HIV and she's pregnant and she has to go through the entire process and give give birth. But recently, again, we tried to bring up another. We, we came up with another program because we realized that uh, women actually they don't use uh, condom. They always uh, push the men to use the condom when they are actually when they are the ones who are actually prone to this uh, particular illness, you know, they, they, you know. So we decided, we actually came up with a program that will facilitate the access of uh, the female condom, so we will reduce the spread of HIV amongst the, the, the gender, the, 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 the women. Yeah, so um, 
really what we are actually the, the phase that we are in we actually go out we as you see here we have a, a, a female vagina that we use to demonstrate how women can actually use uh, this their, this condom and have safe sex so that first of all it will not only be HIV but it will also protect them against other STDs and also unwanted unwanted pregnancies yeah because um, I think we have been working with the social affairs for a while now and there are a lot of uh, things that are supposed to be taken into consideration when it comes to uh, care in the, in the, in the female, with the female. So what are the difficulties you face um, um, in carrying out your work, um, in assessing funding and also in trying to sensitize the population about the need to be more HIV AIDS um, aware? In relationship to your general work, um, challenges at the level of uh, carrying out, executing our uh, activities on HIV related. It's uh, first of all funding. We lack funding and we lack materials. And if we go out, we talk about female condoms. You know, the female women need to use this condom. You know, it's not sold. A lot of it is not sold around. So we see more of in most of the, 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 the spots around town, you can actually get this condom. You know, it's it, to get a male condom, but to get the female condom is challenging. So we lack funding. We we we, we don't have the the, the the funding to carry out programs like this that we can have massive distribution of the, this female condom and we, we we put it in the market so that these women can access access uh, this condom. Secondly, with this same target group, there's always the issue of them not feeling comfortable to get it from stores and also from, you know, from uh, the pharmacy because of the way the people will look at them coming to purchase this condom. So it's actually an issue. But recently we actually came up with, uh, with uh, findings that women feel comfortable in saloons. So we want to make sure that we have the, the, the condoms distributed in salon so that that's where they feel comfortable. They talk just about anything in salon. So could it be possible, probably, if um, the churches also try to pipe out um, your message? It will. It will. It will really do the society a lot of good because trying to tell people that abstain from sex, it's at times very challenging. I actually, I will just pass out a, a small. Uh, uh, advice that my stepdad, who is a pastor, gave to me one time when I was younger. He came to me and said, I can I know that if I tell you that abstain is gonna be difficult. But please use condom because HIV is real. That is what he told me. And since then I carry it in my pocket on a daily basis. <laughs> so but that is an advice from a man of God who saw that even though they preach the message, people still go ahead and have sex. Have you um, come in contact with cases of um, stigmatization, maybe women or children having HIV AIDS and they are being discriminated by other people in society? Sure. We, we have had cases, with, especially with the orphans, um, that we, we, those who are HIV positive, the stigmatization that they get from the community, the local, uh, their neighbors and stuff, because they actually knew that their parents maybe died because of the HIV and they know that they actually give birth to them and they are also infected and looking at their um, their health, physical health, you actually see a lot of you know uh, a lot of challenges that they are facing. So yeah, psychological, uh, psychosocial, I think that's one of the things we offer psychosocial support to these uh, Offerings. ones who are stigmatized. Now um, if you were to be supported by an organization, what way would you advise them to support you or what kind of projects do you want to boost up your activities? Um, there are two areas that we need support that we actually work more on. It's uh, one will be these orphans. You know, if uh, the care, you know, uh, healthcare services could be provided to these orphans. So they have regular checkup treatment and yeah, because this is one of the things they lack. First of all there's poverty and they lack you know healthcare services. In that area I think we'll need we we'll need support in that area. The other area will be uh, to promote the access of female condom to the market. Because that is the area where we see 
you know, that is the future. That is where the future of the country really lies. That's what, we... what about rural urban women? Um, is there any divide in terms of um, awareness to HIV AIDS? I would say in the rural areas, I think more of the women there are not really aware of they are aware that HIV exists, but they look at it more like it's some sort of, uh, most often it's like uh, somebody has been with you, you are dying because they don't look at it as HIV. And most often nowadays, most people relate, people who die of HIV like they have been bewitched by somebody. Which, is not. which means, to, um, probably, it's right to say that HIV AIDS um, interventions should target rural areas. Sure, sure, it should, it should. It's very it's necessary that I mean it's very important that we go to Uriah. What other activities do you do here? Okay, um, actually the organization uh, focuses all its all its activities on uh, education and research. And we since we are all in the area of trying to reduce poverty, we have about uh, we have five thematic areas of intervention. Uh, education, uh, we have uh, training, and uh, in the area of training, we actually work on some income generating activities uh, to sustain the whole initiative. We have environment, we have agriculture, we have health, which we specialize normally just on HIV and AIDS. And uh, in terms of um, your agricultural interventions, uh, what do you target? Okay, um, we we actually came to, I think it's normal that we all Cameroonians, we know that uh, the agricultural uh, department uh, is uh, responsible to like 70% of our economy, uh, that is the gross domestic product. Uh, so we, we are targeting farmers who actually uh, cultivate in, in different areas. We try to do research to know what uh, can uh, produce, can, can actually work better on their farmland that will give them, uh, that will make them maximize production on their farmland. So we 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 try, we, we work with them, we give them training on what can really do better on their farmland and we also give them marketing uh, training so that there they can access the market and they make the benefits of what is coming from their farms. What difficulties do you face in terms of your work? Actually, you know, with, with us really in Africa, the difficulty we, we face most often is the financing of some of this project and also the, the aspect of you bring a new idea to, to your target group and they are expecting that you know you you don't just give them this idea but you push the idea forward which means that they might require more financing for them to start implementing the idea that you are bringing forth to them so the, the even if the idea is beneficial to them even if it's beneficial to them they'll tell you that we we we, we, we live we live we have less than uh, two dollars a day and we have an, a big family most of most often from like the questionnaires that we from the uh, research that we have been doing in the field, you will realize that um, a family, you will say, do you have an income of uh, more than 25,000? We, we try to put 25,000 from 25 to 50,000. You see a majority of them, you know, are saying that they live, they have the uh, income in a month is uh, below 25,000. And they actually live out of the, the, their farms. Now, um, how many um, workers do you have here? Um, presently, we have we have three of us, three permanent staff. Then we have students on internship, uh, four students on internship, then, uh, and one international volunteer who will be with us for a year. Thank you very much for talking to the Copenhagen Consensus for HIV AIDS for Sub-Saharan Africa and to the African Center for Community and Development and I wish you the best in the wonderful work you're doing towards development and towards well-being in society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching People, Places and Events. Thank you very much. And uh, you just listen to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. Because all of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
to go into several schools Thank to make your academic tendencies for the government correct to jelly and go go gather uh, destroy their food with the with the the camp and uh, that other camp the local camp you know for said everybody for some reason And we shall also be very interested in this point at the moment. There's something that needs to be explained. Some lives are meaningful. Some are empty. Lives that are meaningful with too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. You know, after some of these earthly adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening. You're welcome to the program Green Planet.